flats. What you want, Ruby? I was thinking Ruby might have come back into heat this morning, but she's not showing any signs now. So I guess not. She stopped at the buck pen, and I thought, hmm, did we not get you bread last time? So I think we have a ton of goat's bread starting um, Valentine's Day on. We should have some babies dropping. So, what about you, Autumn? You're in heat, aren't you? We're not going to breed, Autumn. We're not going to do that to her, her little sweetness. We just don't want to. We just don't want to. She's too sweet. We don't want to mess up any of her awesome body condition because she looks so healthy now. So, well, I guess she's always been a little plump girl, like her mama. Uh, where's, where's time? That's hearts. Hearts is looking pretty plump too. So I think we bred hearts. Um, I think Fern may have had a go. Fancy girl, maybe. Shy. Dominique. Time. Kitty. Fancy two. Shady. And I think that's it. Oh, and truly. I'm pretty sure she's bred. But time right here. Ryan and I have been talking about how she is like the easiest keeper in the whole herd. She never has issues and she's always got a thick shiny coat and she's always got a nice plump body and she stays in milk for a long time. She's still in milk and it's been a year um, since Autumn was born. So it is tempting to uh, breed Autumn. My dad thinks I should. He thinks it would be good for her um, spiritually that she would enjoy being a mom, but sorry, Dad, I'm just not ready yet. Maybe next year. I just feel like anytime you breed an animal, you got to be prepared for any type of pregnancy complications, birthing complications that could potentially harm them, and I'm just not not prepared for that with my sweet Autumn. So we'll breed her again and hopefully get another beautiful Autumn that that won't end up with the deficiency that harmed her so much while she was developing. So, look at them. It's goofy. They're goofy goats. Love my goats. Oh, poor Fluffanutter. No girlfriend today. Oh, you are disgusting. Poor Fluffanutter is getting no pets from Mommy. If you guys remember the first two years that we had him in the fall, he never really went into rut. Like, he never did the whole stinky buck thing. Look at his face. That is so stinky. His ears are white normally. His chest is white. His beard is white. He's disgusting. He's so gross. And the stench is so foul. And I'm a pretty okay with a goat buck smell, but he's gross. Well, Peter Pepper is not is stinky. That's the old water, by the way. The new water's in there. I gotta, I was gonna dump that on the grounding rod. You stink. Oh boy. I can't wait until rut season is over and I can pit you again. Yeah, he's been getting rough with Peter. Not too bad. Just an occasional random ram. You still a sweet boy. Ugh, gross. He's stinky. He quit spraying up your nostrils. That's gross. I guess one of the benefits of having a drought in the middle of the summer in Georgia is that finally we're having a break from major parasite loads. The spring weather that was so wet after the winter that had no cold weather to kill off parasites was very rough on us. When we went into the spring and into the beginning of the summer, we had serious parasite issues in our herd. We had a lot of problems and it was very scary and we had some losses and it was very difficult. Um, that all happened during the time when I wasn't making videos. I wasn't, I wasn't doing well with it mentally or physically with my health. So it um, became really hard for me to pick up the camera. So just know that every time you get a video from me that it's just a sign of me feeling better and I'm definitely feeling a lot better mentally, physically. I think once the 90 degree weather cools off, I think I'll be feeling a lot better. The quail are doing great. They just went through a molt, 
so they're egg laying slow down a little bit but not nearly as much as when a chicken molts it seems like it's a faster process for them so we've been supplementing with mealworms from our mealworm colony if you're interested in that i'll leave a link um to our video showing the easy way to grow mealworms without having all the extra steps of separating out the different stages the mealworms provide extra protein to help with the new feather growth. We also make sure that we continue giving them the high protein game bird feed. Um, that's really important to their health and keeping them actively laying and doing well. I have to give another huge thank you to the people who came out for the Wholesome Roots Summer Soiree for all of their help in the weeding of this garden. I am so happy to say that these asparagus have been regrowing through this drought and heat because of the weed suppression being taken off of them. So it looks like we're gonna have a great asparagus harvest in the spring because the plants are coming back into their healthy, strong health. It's funny because in New England and um, other cooler parts of the country, People say that asparagus grows wild on the side of the road in, in the ditches with the weeds. But here in Georgia, the slightest amount of weed stress, well, not the slightest. It does okay with chickweed as a winter cover crop. But when it gets that creeping Charlie in there and the goldenrod that was growing up in it, it really stressed the plants out and made them not produce as much. Um, so it's, it's interesting to me that it doesn't do as well in the south as it does the north, obviously but that the weeds make a big difference. So we're gonna have to really stay on top of it this year. And once the winter kills back all of this green fern foliage on the asparagus, we're gonna go through and put a nice thick layer of mulch to protect it from the weeds in the spring. Our permaculture perennial fruit and berry bed kind of got a hit to it. The goats got out. Somehow they knocked down one of the posts, probably because it's so dry out, it loosened up in the ground. And I looked out here and they were mowing down. They ate down all the leaves off of the raspberries, but you can see they're regrowing from the center. So they're coming back, but they ate down all of those. They ate down all the comfrey. They ate down all the strawberries. So the strawberries are already growing back. Here, let me show you one down here where it's like real obvious. Like this. You see, these sticks were all leaves. Those were all leaves growing. And so when the goats ate them off, the strawberries started producing new leaves down at the base from the center rosette. So it's really bouncing back quite well, and I think it's going to be fine. We'll still have plenty of strawberry in the spring. Of course, all of the tomato are dead, 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 dead. Um, the basil went to seed. It's beautiful still, I think, but um, it's dropping its seed left and right. I need to harvest some of these seed heads so that I can grow more next year. This was a lemon basil I got from Kaylee at the Honeystead. This little volunteer tiny cherry tomato. It's probably a current or a wild tom, one of those types. Um, is still producing fruit, despite the fact that all the other have died. The peppers that we're producing at the beginning of the season are dying back. Probably a lot to do with the drought. Plus, it looks like the goats got to it. The pepino melons never did produce fruit. So I don't know if it's because of the drought or we didn't have a long enough growing season. I'll definitely try planting them again because they showed a lot of potential. Um, these tomato plants have a lot of herbicide curl on them, so they haven't ever produced anything really worth speaking. My roselle got knocked over and nibbled on by the goats, but it is still producing huge, huge buds. So we're gonna be harvesting these pretty soon, and I wanna do a video on that, so hopefully I'll take you along and you can see what we do with these. Usually they're standing upright like okra, but they fell over. The peppers on this end are doing 
a great job still. These purple peppers were the first peppers to produce and they, I think, are going to be the last ones to produce. They seem to, to do really well through all temperatures of the season. This right here is one of the ones that I was really excited about trying this year. Um, I got these seeds from Jess at Roots and Refuge, and this is Arras con Polo. And it took forever to start producing blooms. So now it's starting to bloom and some fruit is developing. So we will definitely get to try it. My goats kind of surprised me because they came over here and ate all the horseradish leaf down. So I wasn't expecting them to be interested in that. But it's okay. The plant is regrowing leaves just like everything else. Goldenrod is just taking off over here. All of the plants kind of fell over, but they are blooming like crazy and feeding the honeybees and all the other bees and pollinators. Unfortunately, our main stand that we had from that water tank down got cut down during the soiree, so we don't have as much as we used to on this side of the garden, but we still have some, and it does spread quite easily, so we'll be fine. And just over the garden fence over here by the pond, you can see how much the drought has affected us. The water line usually comes up to about where that sedge is, and the edge of the water would be here. The water line went down so far early in the season that plants were able to grow all the way out to there and then it got even worse and the water line has receded even more so our pond is the lowest it's ever been since we've lived here um but we still have water so it's, it's okay we still are feeding our wildlife and taking care of the environment by allowing plants to grow around the edges of the pond that are beneficial to pollinators and other wildlife. We're doing our part to keep the world a little healthier. The good news is the forecast is calling for cooling temperatures this weekend and next week. So that means we're gonna get out of the 90s. To us, that's cooling temperatures. <laughs> A lot of people in the country are dealing with snow and freezing already, and we are over here going, it is 95 degrees. It feels like 100. Uh, not fun. But thankfully, it looks like it's going to get into the 80s and possibly even 70s next week with a chance of rain on Monday or Tuesday. So if that happens, um, these beds are going to be sown so quickly with my carrots, beets, collards kale and uh we will have a fall crop and i'm really grateful for all the help getting this ready for a fall garden um and i'm really glad that i didn't rush to get it planted that week because it all would have died all of my friends that live in the area have all been posting sad sad stories and pictures of what's happened to their fall crops and let me tell you, it's not pretty. So we got lucky that we didn't do it when we should have as a normal season goes because this season has been nothing close to normal. All right, speaking of hot, it is getting hot out here. I'm going to go inside. If you haven't checked out our Amazon links down below in a while, please do. Amazon Affiliate Associates do rely on a slight commission being earned every month or they will cancel it. Due to the fact that I haven't been producing videos very often, our Amazon sales have declined. All you gotta do is use the link. It doesn't charge you any extra. It's the same cost to you. It just gives us a tiny commission off of each of the sales used in our link. So it's very appreciated if you do so. If you do shop on Amazon, it's a great way to help support the channel and our family. For those of you that have continued to use the Amazon link, I really appreciate it. It has kept us being able to keep an active status. So hopefully we'll see an increase here as we start producing more videos. Thank you guys for all of your support.